But then to others, they don't want to be there. Look, Kevin Durant, he's been rumored. We have the the, uh, the Kevin, uh, Le- what is it, the Kevin LeBrant? Meter. Meter. On this show. On yeah. this show. Uh, well, he told Bleacher Report he understands why certain players don't want to play with the Kang. He said, so much hype comes from being around LeBron. He has so many fanboys in the media. Even the beat writers just spawn over him. It's not even about basketball at certain points, so I get why anyone wouldn't want to be in that environment because it's toxic. And the fanboys quote is one of my favorite quotes ever by Kevin Durant. Oh, a great father. father. Oh, I thought he's doing bad. I got I interpreted that that completely wrong. Okay. I thought you said he was a great father to him. I was like, what? Called him a great father. So, yeah. what type of parental role has he played for you and your teammates, LeBron? Oh, okay. So you, uh, yeah, yeah. I, parental role? I, honestly, I'm, I'm, you know, he's. <laughs> I don't know how to really answer that question. I'm, he's been a he's been a, a great leader for us. I wouldn't. I have one father. I, that's my dad, Frederick Irving. Um, but for us, in terms of learning the nuances of the game and also how to win on the court and also how to carry ourselves off the court, I feel like he's been a great influence in, in that role. As we go back to Sage Steele in the studio. Hey, Mark, yeah, game two of our doubleheader is underway in Oakland. Let me go someplace else. Did you speak to LeBron James or talk to LeBron James before you, before you and your representatives met with ownership and let them know that you wanted out? No. Why not? Why? Why would I have to? I'm not saying, no, no, no. I'm not implying that you have to at all. Yeah. But he's the best player in the world. He's a superstar. He- considered the leader of the team, your teammate, who you speak glowingly and very highly about. Mm -hmm. And if you don't want to play there anymore, even though it was a personal decision, chances are, if you don't speak to somebody about it, they might take it personally. Yeah. Do you care about that at all? No. It's his future, his life. I just, Kyrie, I think that I, I think that we're forgetting I, one important thing. I think we're getting, we're getting one important thing. Okay, sure. Um, Stephen A., as you sit up here, and Molly, as, and Max, yeah. um, as you guys are professionals, um, I don't think that uh, you owe anything to another person in terms of figuring out what you want to do with your life. And it's not anything personal. I'm not here to tirade anybody. I'm not here to go at any particular person or the organization because I have nothing but love for Cleveland. Like, I have nothing but love for the times that I spent there. I, there's nothing about that. It just, it comes a time where you mature as, a, as an individual. It's time to make that decision. And there is no looking back from that standpoint. There is no time to figure out how to save someone's feelings when ultimately you have to be selfish in that and figuring out what you want to do. And it wasn't about me not wanting to win. It wasn't anything about that. It was like, I want to be extremely, extremely happy. Like, in perfecting my craft, and that was the only intent that I had. In all of this, and I think that it got a lot more, much more attention because everything else started coming out from who would think that their important opinion mattered most. Right. And I saw previous players, I saw past players, I saw current players speaking on something that had absolutely nothing to do with them. Yes, I'm appreciative of their comments. But at the same time, it, it's ultimately my decision.
now Miami, very frustrated again. Here's the play, George, miscommunication, Chalmers and James upset. And then after a turnover by Chalmers in another three, this was the Miami bench during this last timeout. Chalmers and James still talking about it, and James gets very upset with Chalmers right here and gets in his face. These two have had that kind of relationship. Yes. Chalmers has always been kind of the little brother that they yell at. But you can see the frustration. And Doug, as you said, what this game means yeah, to Miami. Yeah, absolutely. You can downplay it all you want and everything. This game is important. And LeBron very upset. Here's a turnover out of the uh, timeout by Chalmers once again. Let's see if Indiana can converge. into the lane against Isaiah Thomas. LeBron will set it up against Peyton. Came up short. LeBron gets it back. Oh. And finishes the shot. LeBron James. Oh, careless. Biombo inbounds pass. Taken by Thomas. And the Cavs can pull. And for the final shot of the quarter. Go back to that game on January 18th, David. Remember, it's in the first half, but fell asleep in the third quarter. The Magic outscored him Cleveland was a shithole. I'm just saying, Sac, LA, and Boston was all love. Phoenix was cool. Y'all didn't rock with me. <laughs> Cause y'all signed me and then y'all got mad that I was hooping. And I guess messing shit up. Cleveland was a shithole. I see why Brown left. <laughs> see, I see why Brown left. Again. Denver seemed cool. I only been out there once you know, this summer. I'm gonna go out there a couple weeks. Now nah, Cleveland wasn't that bad. I that was that I would I shouldn't have said. No matter the record, teams are gonna play better against us. It's just the, especially on the road, you know, the crowd is gonna be excited. You know, it's gonna be sold out for most of the games. You know, they gonna feed off their crowd, and you know, Drew, you know, being a you know really really solid you know point guard in this league, uh, had a hell of a game as, as far and Terrence Jones, but they also they bench came in and gave him a spark. I don't remember last time I seen Monty Eunice on the court. To be honest. And uh, he came in and gave him a spark. <laughs> so, so those guys just stay ready. When we, when we talked this morning, you said you didn't feel like you lost four or six. Tonight, the tone seemed a little bit different. Than oh, yeah, it felt like we lost five out of seven now. <laughs> we feel like that. Yep, we got to figure it out. It's been a it's been 2017 so far.
Durant to Livingston. Livingston will pull up the jump shot. That won't go. And a late whistle and a foul on Tristan Thompson, who's just been thrown out of the game. Now Green and Tristan Thompson going at it with 2.6 remaining. Thompson's been ejected. Tony Brothers immediately on the foul call whistled the foul and said, you're gone. Draymond Green took exception to something. And again, as Jeff, you said, it all started with Steph Curry and LeBron James talking to each other. Then it was Clay Thompson that got involved. You're either player. You don't want to get involved in anything where there's going to be a fight and suspensions. I wonder why he got thrown out for that. Tony Brothers immediately... Neatly threw him out. I mean, right away, you see him there. That's not a play where you get tossed. You see a different angle on it. Then afterwards, Thompson says something and puts the ball in the green space. And you can't do that. No but punches he was, thrown. He was tossed before that. Yep. Now, that was the end of the skirmish. This was the end of that particular play. And these two just talking, going back and forth. Thompson trying to pull him away. And Thompson having something to say. Much to do about nothing there. But you can get tricked, not LeBron, but fans around the world and see, you know, Steph Curry and Klay Thompson. And you could think, I mean, with all due respect, 